Hi everyone, we would now like to spend some time talking about the presentations within the statement of cash flows. Now friends, we've already talked about the various activities, namely operating, investing and financing, right? As a part of our uh, activities to be reported for different sets of transactions, you know, under, under the statement of cash flows. This section actually just takes us to a, a detailed discussion around these aspects in terms of what are the different uh, examples of right operating investing in financing activities that we must be aware of okay so this particular presentation would want us to identify right what are the different uh, operating financing and uh, investing activities specifically and and this is just a repeat of what we have covered that uh, operating activities include the principal revenue producing activities of the entity which are not financing or you know investing activities investing activities are are more towards the acquisition and disposal of long-term assets and investments, right? Which are not included in the cash equivalents, right? And uh, finally, financing activities would include those activities which change the size and composition of uh, equity and the long-term borrowings, right? So that's what it's, this whole whole perspective is, and it's a more more of a, a revision of what we have done, but in a more detailed manner at a transaction level that we want to identify which transactions uh, meet the definition of uh, operating or investing or financing activities as the case may be. Okay, let's start with the operating activities. Uh, we have we have discussed this definition several times. It includes all those activities which are which are the revenue generating activities of the entity, uh, which would be obviously coming in your, your statement of profit or loss, wherein the cash is involved. So please always remember for a statement of cash flows, always look at the movement cash right the cash movement is important which means that if there is let's say any any non cash item right let's say depreciation etc that impacts your profitability would not be of course a part of your statement of cash flows if there is a change in accrual right or or a change in a provision they would they would they would impact the profitability again but they would not impact for example the cash flows and it would apply by the way to any kind of an activity be it operating financing investing as the case may be right so the cash flows from operating activities would include sale of uh, you know goods or services the, the cash received from that anything that comes in form of uh, royalty fee commissions or other revenue the cash receipts importantly for an insurance company the premiums or the claims or annuity etc uh, payment to suppliers uh, payment to or on behalf of employees Income taxes normally, unless they can be identified with financing or investing, if it is the case, maybe. So they would all be examples of, of course, operations. Okay. Let's have a look at this question. Again, a list of activities. It says that High Tech Limited is in the business of trading laptops. From the below transactions, identify which transactions would be considered under uh, in the calculation of operating cash flows, right? Under a direct method. Now, this is something we haven't talked formally as yet, but purely on the movement of cash, right? We need to identify whether something would meet the definition of operating cash flow or not, right? Now it's business of, it's in the business of trading laptops. So any receipt from the sale of laptops would by default meet the operating activities, right? Purchases of laptops, payment of that would meet the definition of operating activities. Credit sales, which means non-cash, so we need to obviously ignore that part. Right? This is not cash. Right? That's what you want to remember. Charges received from customers for repairs of laptops, operating activities again. Warranty claims received from the companies, again, operations. Employee-related expenses, operating. Advertisements, operating. Loss due to reduction in the market value of the closing inventory is a non-cash item. Right. So you don't again include that here, right? You're not, you're not, you're not giving or taking cash. It's just a reduction in the value, and that's how you start treating it there. Okay. Again, further activities: the interest paid on cash credit facilities. Now, while we said that the bank overdraft is an example of a cash and cash equivalent, uh, that includes of course a cash credit facility, but interest paid is essentially a financing activity, not operations. Okay. 
profit on sale of old computers and printers in exchange of new computers and printers again there's no cash involved so this is not cash okay you want to remember that payment of uh, let's complete this payment of suppliers again we use that operating depreciation is non cash so i wouldn't want you to worry advance received from customers again this could be operations because it's happening in the normal course sales tax and excise duty operations proposed dividend now even if you pay dividend for that matter so it's a proposed dividend it's a non cash essentially but if in case you pay the dividend even a payment of dividend would be a financing activity not an operating activity for sure okay it's a quick list of course that we have discussed so these are the examples or the explanations of that why would you include receipts because this is a main revenue generating activity purchase of laptops are again operations credit sales are excluded right charges is revenue generating activity warranty claims again revenue generating activity employee expenses or advertisement expenses again operations so we don't have to worry about that part uh losses or gains or losses of you know in the value of the uh inventory it doesn't it's not it's not included because it's a non cash item right interest paid is financing uh, profit on sale is it's a book profit so it does not really bring any cash okay payment of suppliers is operations depreciation is non cash uh advance received or or the sales tax for example are both operations and dividend would be if at all you are paying that for example will be part of financing and not operating okay i think this is something which is a summary of in terms of what is included and what is not included they're all a part of uh, you know the, the coverage as we have done before right so just just a quick uh, summary of what we have covered in this particular question okay the next one is investing activities all you want to remember you know all your long term investments and assets are covered here, right so something you want to remember right? all long term investment or assets including investment in a business investment in a subsidiary disposal of a subsidiary disposal of a machine disposal of an asset they are all a part of your investing activities right you're simply talking about you would make an investment for example normally to 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 expand your business right and and that has to be of course reported accordingly whatever investments that you are making the cash movement has to be understood right if you for example for the sake of argument if you are giving away one machine and taking another machine as a replacement there's no cash movement you have to be obviously careful about that okay examples would include simply the the, the cash inflows from sale of property plant equipment intangible investment properties uh investment in shares of other businesses etc so they would all be especially when they're long term of course specifically when they're long term they would be cash inflows right similarly there could be an acquisition of property plant and equipment or intangible or other long term assets they would they would all be a part of your statement of uh, cash flows within the investing activities right any any expenses which are capitalized you know you would you would look let's say for example talk about some borrowing costs which are added to the cost of the asset if they are if they are relating to qualifying assets right you would know these things under ndas 23 borrowing costs so they would also be a part of investing activities only okay examples i think that's what we have discussed something which is uh, there if you are for example let's say having some investments in some other businesses and you sell those they would be part of your inflows there could be repayments of advances or loans to some other parties there's an investment for example it could also be instances although typical there would be some forward contracts or future contracts etc you know uh, when there are from from a long term perspective other than let's say trading or speculation right so in this context we will look at again investing activities examples similarly just the just the other side of it you know here you talked about the sale of equity here you're talking about the acquisition of equity or debt right so that's what we look at similarly cash advances or loans made or similarly payments for any futures contracts etc they would all be a part of let's say let's say you know investing activities okay let's classify for example and importantly you want to remember that it's you talking about a psu bank right 
So many are financing, uh, many of financial transactions would be a part of the operations of the business. So you need to be carefully assessing that part. The question says, Shobhita Limited, a PSU bank operating in India, has reporting the following transactions during the year. You are required to identify which transactions will be classified as operating and which will be classified as investing, right? It's a bank, importantly. So any deposits received are operating, repaid are operating, interest received or paid is operating, loan given to customers operating, loan repaid, of course, is just the other side operating, commission received is operating as well, okay? But then when you say furniture purchase, it becomes investing, implementation of software, long-term asset investing, purchase of shares in a subsidiary investing, lease rental paid, operating, service tax paid as operations, new car purchase, it's a non-cash because you're talking about you know, exchange rather than anything else. So this non-cash provident fund is operating, stock options is again non-cash, right? So just want to be quickly understanding what are the list of items which would be a part of your operating or investing or whether they fall in neither of the two categories. Okay, the solution is provided. It's all operations and then furniture, for example, which is a part of investing activities. And then you look at, of course, uh, software or investment in a, let's say, a different business, right? So they're all going to be part of your investing. And then you look at it, of course, there are some non-cash items again, which becomes a, a part of, which are excluded from the statement of cash flows from, from that context, okay? Finally, we look at the financing activities. Well, you can, of course, create money or wealth by, uh, let's say, you know, raising uh, uh, money in form of equity, maybe preference shares, maybe equity shares, maybe share premium, for example, or by borrowing from a bank. So a long-term loan would be a classic example of financing. Okay, so they're all they're all a part of your, you know, uh, financing activities and any repayments of those or anything that you pay for those funding, right? Maybe a dividend you are paying back, right? Maybe you're paying the interest on the loans. They're all again examples of financing activities, right? So that's where you start looking at the relevances of that. The basic examples would be straightforward. Issue of shares, the money comes in or debentures, et cetera, long-term borrowing, short-term borrowings till the time they, they do not go into the operating side of it. They would be all example of financing activities. Similarly, outflows would be, for example, a buyback of a share or a dividend payment or, or let's say, you know, repaying the loan, for example, or for that matter, let's say, you know, you're repaying interest on that, right? Similarly, any, any finance leases, for example, any repayments of uh, those leases would again be a very clear example of financing, okay? We're given now this scenario, right? This is the, the scenario for identifying. Now, this wants us to, by the way, classify in the three different heads. It says, Diamond Limited has multiple businesses and multiple segments and has reported the following transactions during the year. You're required to identify which transactions would be classified as operating, investing, or financing, okay? A dividend received from shares in subsidiaries, share of subsidiaries, you made an investment in a subsidiary, you received a dividend back, it's an investing activity very comfortably, okay? Likewise, you made investments in other companies, you received dividends. Again, an example of investing activity, okay? Bonus share issued is a non-cash item, right? You want to remember that, okay? Purchase of license, you are investing in some long-term assets. Royalty received is in operations, okay? Issue of preference shares is financing, you are funding your business purchase of shares of subsidiary is an investment that's what you want to remember okay i will look at the further list dividend paid since you funded your business you finance your business by issuing shares any dividend repayment is a part of finance okay interest paid on deposits again you must have collected money by 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 giving deposits and you're paying interest on that it becomes a part of financing Purchase of goodwill, long-term asset investing. Acquire the assets of the company by issue of shares, very clearly non-cash, okay? Interim dividends is financing again. Any dividend is part of 
finance dissolved 100% subsidiary and received the money is an investing activity rent received and letting out is not the main business i don't want to call it it says rent received from the let out of building and letting out is not the main business it would be a part of your operating activity and finally interest received is a part of your investing activity once again all right so this is the entire information that you want to look at and of course you proceed further okay that's what you want to remember okay just to quickly revisit when you look at of course the cash flow from operating activities it's just just a repeat of the entire section just a quick summary of what we for example refer to the meaning of operating activities the principal revenue generating activities investing activities all about acquisition and disposal of long term assets and investments financing activities are something which change the composition of your capital structure equity preference shares debentures bonds bank loan etc they're all examples of financing activities in this case all right